Hey, what's up? So we're gonna do a Newton's method problem. We're gonna use decimals to make our lives a little bit easier. In this case, they want us to estimate all solutions to this equation. But I'm gonna start by just setting this equal to f of x. And I wrote that in decimals already. You can see our graphs. And you can also see where it equals zero. Well, equals zero 1.38. Uh, 1.83. Anyway, it says make your solutions accurate to six decimal places. Okay, so this is not good enough. Decimals is only giving me three decimal places. But we're going to use Newton's method. So Newton's method requires that you use this as a way to guess what the x's are. So because I've already got the graph, I can start off by just guessing something close to 1.831. I could start off with two. Obviously, I could start off with 1.831, but let's just go with two to make our lives a little simpler in terms of understanding what we've been doing. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a guess of two. And this is kind of keeping track of your guesses. And it turns out that ultimately we're gonna be doing six guesses until we eventually arrive at a good approximation for what it actually is. Ultimately, this is going to be our answer, but I'm gonna show you how to get there. Now, <clears throat> let's also first explain what it would look like if we were just doing it by hand with our first guess being two. Okay, so the way you write that down is x1 equals two, and then we throw that into this formula. So it would be x1 here, that's gonna be two. Everywhere you see a xn, I'm gonna put a two right now. So it's gonna be two minus f of two over f prime of two. Okay, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna get us our next guess. So anyway, we wanna figure out what two minus f of two over f prime of two is. Now, if I want, I could do this by hand, I could figure out what f prime is, and then I could plug in two, and I also plug in two into the original function, but we're not gonna do that, because it's annoying, right? Let's use the modern technology before the AI wipes us all out. So let's start with two, this might actually help the AI wipe us out, but anyway. 2 minus f of 2 over f prime of 2. Okay, so that's how I arrived at my second guess. Now, I can just label that x2, which I got right here, and I already copied that in. Okay, so the next step would be to set up your third guess. So if you're going to set up your third guess, then it would be that you need to take your second guess, subtract f of your second guess, and divide it by f prime of your second guess. Okay, so now I'd have to remember that x2 was really 1.8 blah, 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 blah. So that would be really annoying to have to write. I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell Desmos Everything's gonna be in a certain form. It's always gonna be a minus f of a over f prime of a. And now I have to hit add a slider, and now it gives me the option to let a be whatever. So it's now set up in the right form for me to just keep plugging in my guesses. And that's how Newton's method works, you keep plugging in your guesses. So I need to copy this number it is the 1.5, so let me highlight it, copy it, and now for my A down here, I'm gonna replace it, let's get rid of this guy, we don't need him anymore, and I'm gonna replace it with this number. Now that gets me my third guess. So at this point, I have to plug that number in, so I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna replace the A, so Desmos knows to do the next one, and there we go, now I've gotten my fourth guess. So you should write this down just like I did. Just keep track of what you're doing. But now we copy this number and we replace our A 
And that gets me my fifth guess. Now you can see that my guesses are starting to get pretty good. The first four decimal places here are matching up. Uh, sorry, that's actually uh, five decimal places that are matching up. And now I gotta copy one more time because they told me get the first six decimal places to match up. So let's see if our next one does that. And I had already copied it in from before. And this is the answer you get. It is now getting to the point where we are donezo. We got the first six decimal places to be the same there. In fact, we even got seven to be the same. Three, six, seven. Yeah, so we are lighting it up. So they want our solution to be accurate to six decimal places. So this is it. This is our guy. Now, just to understand what we're even doing here, let's plug this number into F. Let's ask decimals, hey, what would F of that be? And when we plug it in, it tells me it's 2.3 times 10 to the negative 12. Okay, so what the hell does that mean? Well, that means it's gonna be 2.3 but the time sense of the negative 12 tells you move the decimal 12 times to the left. Well, what that's going to do is result in 11 zeros being here. I don't even want to try to figure that out exactly how many zeros to write. But let's just say it's going to be damn close to zero. This is going to be so close to zero because it's going to be 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. whatever two. So it's not exactly getting us the zero that we wanted. So it's not exactly zero, but this is pretty darn close to what the actual answer is. So if you want to throw it in Mathematica, you're going to get an answer that will at least have these first six decimal places being accurate. All right, so that's how you can use decimals to make your life a little bit easier on Newton's method instead of always having to use by hand and writing out every single step. Screw that. Use decimals. It's better. Like, subscribe, whatever you want to do.